That sound is the explosion of a supersonic wave. The Earth's atmosphere has been invaded by a cosmic rock the size of Everest. It weighs trillions of tons and is flying towards the Earth at an incredible speed of 12 miles per second. It would fly from New York to Anchorage, Alaska faster than you can fry an omelet. Don't worry, we're safe. The dinosaurs that ruled the planet at the time, however, not so safe. This was a um, bad day for them. This disaster began in the area we now call the Yucatan Peninsula, modern Mexico. The meteor did make impact on the ocean, but the water did not extinguish it. The collision caused a huge amount of energy to be released, which began a cataclysm on a planetary scale. Imagine another sun lit up on the surface of the Earth. The initial blast actually blew through the surface. It was as hot as an oven and burned everything in its path. It set up a tsunami as high as the Statue of Liberty from the epicenter. The impact also provoked a colossal earthquake and volcanic activity. Several nearby volcanoes simultaneously released hot lava from their calderas. Millions of tons of ash and soot were released into the atmosphere, poisoning the air. This formed a huge ash cloud in the atmosphere, which for several years didn't allow the sun's rays to reach the Earth. The long nuclear winter began. Only it wasn't snow that fell from the sky, but a rain of sulfuric acid. Yes, it's safe to say that Chicxulub is one of the most devastating culprits in the history of our planet. In fact, why don't we have ourselves a trial against this space monster? Let's investigate this 66 million year old crime. Thanks to scientists' efforts over the years, we have plenty of evidence. I'll be the judge. In the name of space law, I give the floor to the prosecutor. Respected judge, jury, today it is obvious to all that it was this asteroid that led to the extinction of our beloved dinosaurs. Some more beloved than others, <clears throat> T-Rex. There are other suspects, volcanic eruptions, a lot of oxygen in the atmosphere, a supernova explosion, temperature changes, the list is very long. But scientists have, without a shadow of a doubt, determined the truth. This asteroid left a crater on the planet's surface with a diameter of 93 miles and a depth of 12 miles. Though this scar is hidden under the ocean water, it can still be seen today. The perpetrator did attempt to hide evidence, as the temperature at the center of the collision was so hot, it vaporized part of itself, but not nearly enough. We know that lots of asteroids are abundant with the material called iridium. The fragments off this rock contain 300 times the normal amount. And research shows these fragments are exactly 66 million years old, just like the defendant. This is the definitive proof of guilt. Furthermore, the defendant knocked 25 trillion tons of hot rock out of the Earth. The debris of the asteroid mixed in with the Earth's material, and the immense heat turned the stones into glass. Scientists call these tektites. The energy of the impact threw them into the atmosphere, and after a short flight upward, the tektites then fell down upon the Earth. It was like a rain shower, only instead of water, it was a rain of hot fireballs. They bombarded the planet's surface for 24 hours and set fire to everything they fell on. Scientists have found traces of them all over the world. These are undeniably shards of Chicxulub. I arrest my case. Respected prosecutor, your evidence is very convincing, but our judgment must be objective. We now give the floor to the defense. Your Honor, I believe this is a terrible misunderstanding. My client isn't some space offender. It's simply the victim of cosmic circumstances. In fact, the asteroid Chicxulub isn't even an asteroid, but in fact, the fragment of a comet. These aren't my words. These are the conclusions of a study conducted by a group of astrophysicists at Harvard University. Asteroids are made of stone and metal. Most often, they resemble the shape of a potato. Comets, on the other hand, contain rock, metal, and ice. They look like dirty snowflakes with ammonia, methane, and 
carbon dioxide mixed in. Most comets come to us from the Oort cloud. This is a large accumulation of ice debris around our solar system. Due to the elongated orbit of flight, from time to time, comets emerge from this cloud. So occasionally, a cosmic snowball crosses the barrier and enters our solar system. This is what happened to my client. According to scientists, Chicxulub's flight path put it dangerously near Jupiter which, with its impressive gravitational pull, accelerated Chicxulub's velocity and put it on a collision course with the Sun. The Sun's heat then evaporated the comet's outer coating of ice and dust, which formed a tail. But even before making impact, the Sun's gravity shattered the comet apart. One of those fragments was the one that flew through space and crashed into the Earth 66 million years ago. Yes, there is some debate among scientists on this hypothesis, but regardless of the details, one thing is certain. My client did not intend to crash into the Earth 66 million years ago. Circumstances conspired it to be so. You're on. All right, I have listened to both sides and I've made my decision. In the name of the space court, I declare that the defendant is acquitted. Well, that was a bit of fun. The truth is that space rocks like Chicxulub are a dime a dozen. There are millions of them bumping into one another in the vastness of space. The Earth was just unlucky enough to be in the path of this one. Though the impact it's had on the planet cannot be overstated, this catastrophe ended the development of 75% of life on the planet. Some marine animals did survive the impact, for example, uh, crocodiles, turtles, and fish. Of the inhabitants on land, the only animals to survive were tiny creatures, no larger than a modern raccoon. Among them are several species of avian dinosaurs, which are actually the distant ancestors to modern birds. Scientists believe they survived for two reasons. First, unlike most herbivores that relied on grass for their diet, these dinosaurs had beaks, which they could use to split nuts and dig out seeds. So even when most of the plant life was gone, they could still subsist on what's left. Secondly, these dinosaurs' brains were larger than those of most. This means that avian dinosaurs could cooperate with each other and quickly adapt to new conditions. Lots of fungi and mold also survived underground and underwater. Gradually, the darkness cleared away and ferns began to take over the lifeless landscape once again. Thousands of years later, forests reappeared on Earth. One unexpected benefit to this disaster is that it allowed for the emergence of the rat-like mammals that are the ancestors to modern humans, as well as whales, bears, and even the platypus. Back before the incident, these mammals would live in the shadow of their dominant dinosaurs. But their disappearance created a biological vacuum. Thus, these mammals were able to quickly occupy that vacant niche and become the new dominant group on the planet. According to multiverse hypothesis, many parallel worlds exist simultaneously with our own. Let's imagine that this is true and that we found a way to travel to these worlds. Let's board a ship to fly through space and time. Our destination is a universe in which the asteroid flew past the Earth. In this reality, the domination of the dinosaurs was never interrupted. Earthquakes, tsunamis, ice ages, volcanic eruptions, the dinosaurs survived all these minor cataclysms. Most of the lizards have changed and are now unrecognizable. Due to the onset of the ice ages, many dinosaurs here are covered in feathers that protect them from the cold. Mammals also exist, but they're few and far between. You see some bats in caves, and there are many rat-sized rodents in the forests. During the day, they hide in the undergrowth or in burrows. At night, they go out in search of food. There are no horses, elephants, or other large mammals in this world. Why become large and noticeable if there are so many dangerous reptiles with big appetites around? There are no whales in the sea. There are no parrots, hawks, or pigeons in the sky either. But you can see creatures similar to pterodactyls soaring past. Some are about the size of a helicopter, while others are no larger than a swan. There are also primates, but they're in no hurry to climb down from trees and walk on two legs. 
In our real world, our primate ancestors settled in the savanna, where, because the distance between trees was much wider, they started walking on the ground between, eventually standing upright and evolving into Homo sapiens. In this world, open spaces are still very dangerous, so these primates stayed in the trees and evolved to more resemble a lemur, not a chimpanzee. So of course, humans have never emerged on this planet. This means there are no roads, cities, cars, or space satellites. But flowering plants did evolve, as did many fruit trees. Many small dinosaurs would have evolved to feed on these fruits. This did also happen in our world, back in the Cretaceous period just before the failed collision of the asteroid with the Earth. The dinosaurs of this planet have grown wiser, reaching the level of a modern chicken. But a large brain uses a lot of energy, and enlarging it is not always a good strategy for survival. What's good for a primate in the mammalian world isn't always good for a dinosaur in the reptile world. Thankfully, this isn't our world at all. In our world, that asteroid really did wipe out the dinosaurs. They didn't stand a chance. What's interesting is it wasn't really the size of the asteroid that made the impact fatal, but where and how it hit the Earth. When measuring meteor impact, one important factor is the angle of incidence, which determines the kind of fallout to expect. Chicxulub hit the Earth at a 60 degree angle. This was the worst case scenario. At that angle, the impact knocked a lot of water vapor and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, but more importantly, lots of sulfur. This substance stayed in the atmosphere and formed aerosols, which are tiny particles that blocked the sun's rays. Without the sun, plants disappeared and the climate became colder. If the angle of impact was any different, then the dinosaurs could have survived this catastrophe. As cool as dinosaurs are, I'm glad I can go outside and not have to worry about a random raptor attack or a triceratops stampede. So as devastating as Chicxulub was all those 66 million years ago, I guess I'm glad things played out the way they did. We wouldn't be here otherwise. Thanks for watching. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.